Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. For today's video, I am going to be sharing life-changing beauty hacks that I wish I knew about sooner. We're gonna cover all beauty categories in today's video, so I have a lot of random but super helpful tips to share, like how to prevent mascara streaking, how to tame flyaways, how to refresh your underarms, how to get the perfect overnight heatless curls, and a lot more. So we're gonna jump into all of that in a second, but before we do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know how you are doing today. I hope you guys are all doing great and thank you so much for doing all of those things because it really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm. So I appreciate you so much for that. And if you need anything from me, check out my description box below. I have Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, timestamps, discount codes, links to any products that I chat through today, and links to my favorite beauty products of all time. All right, let's talk beauty hacks. All right, first step is a hack for taming flyaways so that you can instantly make any hairstyle that you're wearing look sleeker and more pulled together. And that hack is to essentially use a clear stick of wax on your hair. So this particular wax stick is the TIGI Bedhead Hair Stick. They are not the only brand that has a hair stick like this. There are others, but this particular product did go viral on TikTok a little bit ago. So that is where I discovered it and why I purchased it. And I'm so glad that I did because I feel like it just makes my life so much easier. It's so easy to use. Literally all you do is rub it on your hair. So any areas where you have flyaways or if you have frizzier kind of poofier areas that you want to just tame down a little bit, make those areas look sleeker, this is a great product to use for that. And there's a lot of styling products out there that can serve that same purpose, but a lot of those products tend to be thicker or oilier or both, and products like that, while great and helpful, often will build up on the hair and make your hair look dirty or greasy, which obviously is not what a lot of us are going for. So that is why I really love this stick, because if you only use a tiny bit of product, it doesn't look like you have anything in your hair, doesn't make your hair look greasy, and you truly do only need the tiniest bit of this in order for it to work. I feel like it just doesn't get more hacky than that. Hacky. It's really just the quickest, easiest product to use. Such a lifesaver. Side note, this is also something that you can use as a little bit of a brow wax lift up the brows, so little two-in-one hack there. All right, next up is a hack for those of you that struggle with mascara streaking on your lid slash brow bone area. This is a hack that I've been doing for years at this point. I physically cannot wear mascara without doing it because it's that foolproof for me. And what I love about it is that you don't have to change your mascara in order to benefit from this hack. So if you have a mascara that gives you really beautiful results, but does end up streaking or smudging on you, you can still use that mascara if you do this hack. So what typically causes that mascara to streak in the first place is when it comes in contact with an oily or creamy surface. So if you have a creamy tinted moisturizer or concealer on your lid, having mascara rub against that makes it really easy for it to smudge. Or if you don't have anything on your lid at all, often the natural oils on your lid will cause that smudging in the first place. So all you have to do to prevent that from happening is take some sort of lighter kind of skin toned color eyeshadow and lay that from basically like your lash line all the way up to your brow bone right below where your brow hairs actually start. So the palette that I have here, sorry, I'm trying not to blind you with the mirror, is the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. I absolutely love this. It's beautiful. It's also the palette that I use to to create shadow winged liner. So many different uses in one palette, but I will take any of the lighter shades here on the top. I'll often mix them together and again, apply a light layer of that from my lash line up to my brow bone. Then I have a dry layer in between any creamy or oily surface so that whenever I open my eyes, my mascara is hitting that dry layer of powder and not the oily surface, and then I don't ever deal with streaking. Plus, another little bonus hack with this is if you use a shade that is a little bit lighter than your natural skin tone, then it helps to brighten up the eye area, but in a way that I think is a little bit more natural than using a really shimmery, bright eyeshadow or doing a really bright inner corner highlight, it's a subtle way to kind of brighten the eyes and bring attention to the eyes that I think is really pretty, and that is what I do all the time. So. I'm obsessed with this hack. You will not catch me applying 
mascara without eyeshadow, I mean, ever again for the rest of my life. All right, next up is the hack for refreshing your underarm area. So if you are feeling extra sweaty, maybe a little bit smelly, maybe both of those things, and you want a really nice fresh base to reapply deodorant on top of, this is the hack for you. And that is to apply witch hazel toner under your arm. So this is the Thayer's witch hazel toner. I have the aloe vera cucumber one. If you're not into cucumber fragrance things, they do have other options, but I personally really love the cucumber scent for this purpose. It's just very nice and refreshing. So I will just take a bunch of this and soak it on a cotton round. This is a reusable cotton round. I found this on Amazon, came in a pack with a bunch of them for really cheap. So I'll list these below as well, but I'll just swipe that under my arms and and it instantly deletes sweat and smell. It works so good for me. It's amazing. I don't really know what it is about the witch hazel that helps to eliminate smell. Witch hazel is an astringent, so it makes sense to me that it helps to eliminate sweat. It also seems to just work really well for me for removing BO. I mean, gross, but that's what it is. So if I'm in a situation where I need to reapply deodorant and I'm not going to be showering yet, then I will always do that or a lot of the times I'll even still do that after I shower is just an additional step to make sure that my underarms are really, really refreshed. I feel like sometimes I need that even after soap and water. It works that good. The only thing you'll wanna remember if you're doing this is to pat your underarm area dry after for deodorant reapplication. Otherwise it just doesn't adhere to your skin as well if it's still wet from this witch hazel and then you're gonna end up still being sweaty and smelly later on which defeats the purpose. Otherwise, you can't go wrong with this. You guys have to let me know if you try this. Game changer. All right, the next hack is a sunscreen hack. For those of you that want to apply or reapply sunscreen to small areas that are prone to sunburn, that are also areas that easily become really messy when you're using a sunscreen cream or lotion. And that is to use a sunscreen stick on areas like your ears, your eyelids, underneath your eyes, even your lips, your eyebrows, the backs of your hands, where else the top of your nose, Areas like that are so, so great to use a sunscreen stick on. So this one is the Neutrogena Mineral Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Face and Body Stick. It's an SPF 50 and the active ingredient is zinc oxide. So it's a really nice option if you want a mineral stick, but it definitely does have just a little bit of a white cast. So if that's not an option for you, I'll list another one below that is also from Neutrogena that is a chemical stick. So you don't have to worry about the white cast at all. It is subtle enough that it's not a problem for me on my natural fair skin, but if I had skin that was any darker than Snow White, it'd be a problem. This is something that you could definitely just use on your entire face for reapplication. If you are on the go, you don't wanna deal with the mess of a lotion. It is so, so nice for that purpose because it's very quick, it's very easy, and it's completely dry in touch and feel and finish. So you really don't have to worry about any mess at all. I personally just don't love the feeling of swiping a stick on my skin if I'm reapplying in the middle of the day, because at that point I've probably been sweating a little bit unless I have been inside all day. But otherwise, if I'm outside and I've been sweating a little bit and my skin is looking and feeling oily, I just don't love the feeling of that, even though it's definitely something that you could do. But for me personally, using a stick like this on my eyebrows, on my eyelids, on my ears is so, so nice because then I don't have to worry about the lotion getting in my eyes, getting all messy on my brows, getting weird in my ears. You guys know how that goes. And I feel like a stick like this is a really nice option for any of you that deal with sunscreen stinging and burning your eyes. That was never something that I really had an issue with but for some reason this summer, some of the sunscreens that I've been testing out have been causing serious stinging and burning that end up affecting me for like two days afterward. Like I almost have a chemical burn in my eye. It's a nightmare. I've been there. I totally understand the pain of that. So if you're one of those people that just has really, really sensitive eyes and you feel like everything causes issue for you, try a sunscreen stick on your eyelids and underneath your eyes. It's such a better option won't cause irritation, plus there's no mess. We love. All right, next up is a hack for refreshing your hair between washes. I guess, I don't even know that I can call this a hack because 
It's not really one, but a lot of you guys ask me how I keep my hair smelling nice between washes, especially with working out frequently. And you can definitely just apply perfume to your hair if you want to. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's not gonna damage your hair. You're not drenching each and every hair strand in perfume. Like if you're doing a few mists, totally fine. But I just don't love using my body perfumes for my hair for a couple different reasons. Number one, because I feel like they just smell a little bit more, I don't know, intensely fragrant than I like my hair to smell. Does that make sense? I like my hair to smell light and fresh and I just like a different scent in my hair than I do on my body. So just a personal preference thing, but also I feel like because my perfumes are more intensely fragrant, it can end up giving me a headache if I spray a lot of that in my hair because my hair tends to really kind of grab onto perfume and it'll last longer in my hair than it does on my body. Plus it's just close to my nose, so I'm smelling it more. I'm weird with smells. You guys know this at this point. So again, this I guess isn't really that much of a hack, but what I like to do is purchase a perfume mist like this one from Sol de Janeiro. This is the Tan Lines Mist. It smells unbelievable you guys oh my god this has notes of lete de coco warm sand solar tuberose ylang ylang creamy vanilla and amber like all my favorite things it is divine but they do have a lot of other scent options available if this is not your favorite scent I can't imagine anyone not liking this, but that's okay if you don't like it. They have a lot of other options and I want to buy them all. They all smell so, so good. And the bottles are so cute and all in different colors. I want them all displayed on my vanity. I'm crazy. But anyway, this is a perfume mist that on my body definitely does not last, but in my hair does last a little bit longer. And I just love the light, fresh scent. It's so, so delicious. So I have been spraying this I mean, for like the past month or so, nonstop in my hair. I freaking love it. I'll do a different perfume on my body, the spray in my hair, and I feel like it just, it's everything. It really does smell so nice. So I would highly recommend that. You obviously can just use actual hair care products that are nicely fragranced, like leave-in conditioning sprays and stuff, but something about this, man. <sighs> All right, next up is a hack for enhancing the glow of, I mean, I guess basically anywhere you want your glow to be enhanced, but especially areas like your collarbones, your shoulders, your decollete area, the tops of your cheekbones without the mess of an oil. And we actually have more sticks involved with this hack. Really enjoying the sticks for these hacks apparently. So both of these sticks are kind of like dry oil sticks. I think the Super Goop one is more of a true dry oil. This one is, sorry, I didn't even say what these were. Hold on, I'm not doing this very well. This is the Super Goop Glow Stick. It's also an SPF 50, which is really nice. This one does not have SPF. It is the Vaseline Coco Shimmer Jelly Stick, the one that says Glow Up. This has a little bit more of a balmy feel to it, but they both end up feeling very dry on the skin. They're not messy and oily. There's no greasy feel whatsoever. I actually put them on today. Oh my gosh, I think it is so beautiful. It just makes any area that you apply it to look juicy and glowy, but it's not like that intensely luminous look that you get from a liquid luminizer that's really pearly. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those are super popular. I think that they're really pretty as well, but for something that's more natural, I think sticks like this are beautiful. They work amazingly on the tops of your cheekbones. If you're not into a really powdery looking highlight, like the disco ball highlight, but you still want to draw attention to your cheekbones, using a oil or balm stick like this is such a good way to do that. So I think that these are so pretty. I'm obsessed, I'm loving the sticks. All right, next up is a bronzer hack that's going to allow you to find the perfect bronzer shade match that also ends up looking a lot more natural on your skin. And that is to use a complexion product that is actually designed for your entire face, like a pressed powder foundation, a cream or balm foundation, a liquid foundation, and use that as a bronzer. This isn't the case with every brand, but for a lot of brands, they only have a very limited number of bronzer shades and that makes it really difficult to find a shade that is not only your perfect 
depth of color, but also your perfect undertone. There's a lot of brands that have amazing bronzer formulas that just don't look quite right on my skin. Maybe they're a little bit too ashy or they're too orange or they're too dark or too light or a combination of those things. And that is super frustrating. I'm sure a lot of you have dealt with that as well, where there's a bronzer where you know, it's really hyped up, everyone loves it, but it just doesn't look right on your skin. But the way that you can fix that is by using a complexion product like a liquid or powder foundation because products like that have much wider shade ranges available, which makes it so much easier for you to find that perfect shade match. Plus products like that tend to be less pigmented, easier to blend, and they almost never have shimmer or glitter in them. So I feel like the result that I get with products like that is almost always more natural looking than an actual bronzer. Not in every situation, there are some bronzers I have that are just amazing, but a lot of the times that ends up being the case. So what I used to bronze today is the Kat Von D Good Apple Skin Perfecting Hydrating Foundation Balm. So this is a foundation balm. They have a lot of different shades and that made it easy for me to find a shade that I think suits my skin tone really, really nicely. This is amazing for application. It's so easy to blend, even though it's a balm that feels really creamy. If you just use a little bit of product and kind of stipple it in, it feels very lightweight. You can easily apply it on top of creams and powders. It's freaking amazing. So I love this as a bronzer. And for a powder option, one brand that immediately comes to mind is having a really, really incredible shade range where hopefully you'll be able to find something that works well for a bronzer is Fenty. Their soft matte longwear powder foundation is an incredible product for this purpose. So highly recommend that or the Kat Von D balm, or if you don't pick either of those products, just looking for products like that from other brands. And I swear you're gonna find something that you love. All right, next up is a hack for wearing your hair in a high bun without causing damage to the hair. This is something that I think I've maybe mentioned in passing in a video before, but everyone needs to know about it because this is such a game changer. I wear my hair like this at least five days a week when I'm just in my apartment, working, cleaning, anything. It is my go-to because I can't stand having my hair down like this when I'm just, yeah, doing my own thing, minding my own business, working. I want my hair out of my face, but I don't want to wear a tightly pulled hairstyle. Like for example, a high bun on the top of my head that's then secured tightly with a ponytail because that is something that can eventually lead to breakage. I like to keep my styles as gentle as possible, but I still want my hair out of my face. So this is what I do. I'm just gonna do this with you guys here on camera, but because my torso is so long, I don't think you'd be able to see. So let me crouch down. Okay. So I will flip my hair upside down and then secure my hair into a ponytail on top of my head with my hands. Hold on. Okay. So we're here. Then how do I explain this? I take my hand and I put it underneath the ponytail. Then I will grab my hair and twist it like this. And then I will keep wrapping my hair around until there's no more hair left. Then I will take a small size jaw clip to secure this in place. So I'll put it over the ends and voila. One of the added benefits of using that jaw clip is that it also helps to kind of prop your bun up and hold it in place while also then securing those ends. So it kind of is serving two different functions there, but it works so well and it's so gentle on my hair. So how I know this is not tugging is because I can just do like a little wiggle test here. See how much movement there is. If I didn't have movement like that, or if I was feeling it tugging on certain areas, that would indicate that the style needs to be loosened so that it's not aggressively pulling anywhere. And at the back of my hair here, yes, it's clamped down on my ends, but there's a big difference between the way that this feels and how the bun feels on top if I have it tightly secured with a ponytail. That again, I can feel tugging. This is not tugging on my hair at all. It is the best, best way to wear your hair in a high bun and get it away from your face without worrying about your hair breaking and snapping off. Try it, you have to. If you don't love the look of the jaw clip in the back, you can also stop the twist off to the side here so that you can kind of put it like at an angle on the side and front. I think that that can be cute and fun and different. You can make it whatever you would like. I usually end up just putting it in the back because again, that kind of helps to push the bun up, but 
swear by it, try it, let me know what you think. All right, second to last is a sunscreen hack for oily skin. So this is for those of you that want to protect your skin, but cannot stand the look and feel of a greasy looking sunscreen, a shiny sunscreen, or even a sunscreen that's just dewy. If you really don't like the look and feel of that, this will be for you, or this is perfect for those of you that maybe are okay with a little bit of a dewy sunscreen, but also want to kind of tone down the look of excessively oily areas on your skin as you're reapplying throughout the day. So what you're going to do is apply your liquid sunscreen as normal, but then after that, take a sunscreen powder like this one. This is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Brush on Shield. It's an SPF 50, really, really nice sunscreen powder. They have a lot of different options, different shades. So that is why I love Color Science for sunscreen powders like this. But you're not just going to apply the sunscreen powder. You are going to place it on this little tool right here. This, I just looked at it as if it was going to have the title on it. Um, it doesn't. This is called the Beauty Blender Power Pocket Puff. It's this little puff that is plush and has, I don't know, like a microfibery material on it that is incredible for powdering oily skin. Something about the way that this presses powder into the skin deletes a look of oil and also deletes a look of pores. So you'll take your sunscreen powder and put it on this power, what's it called again? Power pocket puff right here. And then just press that into the skin and you will be in shock at how mattified and poreless your skin looks instantly. Do a little split face test and you'll see. Do one side of your face first, compare it to the other. It's kind of shocking. So this is an incredible tool for that. And you could apply this on your entire face or just again to any area that are looking extra oily like your t-zone and then just kind of leave the rest of your face free of powder just with that liquid on it whatever you would like to do doesn't matter it is an incredible tool either way you can't go wrong so good for oily skin all right the final hack is for getting the perfect robe tie curl and i thought that i had a pretty good method for robe tie curls before i had definitely figured out a better way to do it than the initial methods that i tried but that old method has nothing on this new one. The results are beautiful. If you follow me on TikTok and or Instagram, you probably already saw this. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to share it with you guys, but I definitely can't take credit for it. I know that there are other creators that have posted this method before, but the creator that I discovered this method from is Shona Scott. I looked up several of her videos. I was trying to find a video that she pronounced her name in and I couldn't find one. So if you guys know how to pronounce her name and it's not that, let me know in the comments below. I really apologize. I don't wanna pronounce her name incorrectly, but I will list the video that I'm referencing below so that you can go watch it and give her a follow. But I will really quickly just explain how this works myself. You're going to put the robe tie in the center of your head so that you have, I mean, it's not gonna be possible to get an even amount in the front and back, but a decent spread between hair in the front of the robe and in the back. This robe tie is from Target, so very affordable, really nice and soft, so perfect for being gentle on the hair. I will, of course, list it below, but let me walk through this process quickly. Okay, so I am going to start off by taking a section of hair in front of the robe tie here and pulling it across the robe tie towards the back of my face, so away from where I originally picked it up. But with this method, you're going to want to always bring the hair back to where you initially picked it up in the first place. So I don't want to leave it here. I want to then pull it underneath the robe so that it is pulling back towards the front where I picked it up. At this point, it's just easier to switch hands. So I am going to swap my right hand for my left. Now I am holding that initial piece in my left hand and I am ready to pick up the next piece. Now I am going to go for a piece in the back like this and I am going to do the same exact thing with it but just in the opposite direction. So pulling it across the robe tie away from where I initially picked it up, then wrapping it underneath the robe tie and pulling it towards the direction that I picked it up. Let me show that one again, because I feel like that was the most confusing part for me. I think it's confusing because it's just easier to hold it in different hands, and then it just, you're kind of like, what's going on? So holding this in my right hand, pulling it across the robe tie towards the front. Now to make it easier, I am grabbing onto it with my left hand. 
so that I can grab this robe tie with my right, but then I like kind of put it back in my right hand. So this is the back piece here putting it back in my right hand so that I can pull it underneath this robe tie back in this direction. Does that make sense? I really hope. We will repeat that one more time for the front and back just so that it's clear. That's all you do. You just repeat that same exact process until you reach the end of the tie, but you'll just want to pick up more hair each time that you are gonna cross over the robe. So we're holding the front piece here. I'm going to grab it along with some more hair and then I am going to pull that across the robe tie. Again, to make it easier, I am now switching hands. So I'm holding the robe tie and the hair from the back in my left hand. Now we're gonna wanna pull it back to where we initially started like this so that it's facing the front and switch hands. This is so confusing to explain. Then we are going to repeat the same process on the back but by picking up more hair at the same time. So now I have a larger section here. At this point, you can just have all the hair in your hand if you want. And we are going to pull it across the robe tie. I am grabbing it with my left hand, pulling the robe away with my right. Now we are looping it underneath again to pull it to the back. I'm really hoping that made sense. So every piece that you pick up, pull it away from where you picked it up, then pull it around the robe back to where it started. Keep doing that. I promise once you get the hang of it, it's easy. It is just a little confusing at first. All right, guys, I think that we will wrap up this video here, but I do still have so many great beauty hacks that I would love to share with you. So if you would like to see a part two of this video, let me know in the comments below. There's a lot more where that came from. And if there is a hack that I shared in this video that you're excited to test out, let me know in the comments below which hack that is. And of course, as always, I will have all the products that I mentioned listed and linked in my description box below so that they're really easy for you to find and purchase if if you're interested. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you again as always for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few short days, but until then, I hope you guys have a great few days.